Yeah. Oh, I swap it with this one then, because I because uh, recording started by the way. Thank you. All right, so we're on here. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our last community board meeting of the year. As for any apologies, I know that uh, John Morrissey is not on people today. Everyone else seems to be here, so we'll just uh, move that we accept those apologies. All those in favour? Aye. Do I have a second? Second. second. Thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we will open the floor for our public forum. We've got quite an audience today. I don't know if there's any order that you'd like to come up. Present guys on, but there's a seat available here. I yeah. If just for the reason of record, if you could just state your name for us. Hi, Aaron Norris. Thanks, Aaron. Um, Ian, we're just here about the gate at Woods Road South. Yes. Um, yeah, so there had been a complaint put on through the gate that was put on across the paper road at the end of the roundabout. Um, and a couple of council members came out. Um, we had a meeting, John McGregor killed another uh, resident and Chad. And um, nothing was really resolved about the gate being there. I mean, it's unlocked during the day. We lock it at night just for safety concerns with uh, ourselves being um, up there. We've had two incidents in the last 12 months of, um, um, I don't know what you, drug, um, People in cars coming up there. Um, one of them came up our, our, right up to our driveway, and when I approached him, he freaked out, reversed backwards straight into our retaining wall, ripped the bumper off of the car, and then took off down the road. Nearly took out one of the neighbours mowing the road, so I mowing his road bridge. Um, and also, um, in place, you know, the, the gate, there's a lot of walkers walk up there, uh, cyclists that use the track, the track that goes over to. Um, Cold. The um, so concerns around that too for safe public safety. The the, the, the road itself was only wide enough for a car, a way vehicle. So if a cyclist was coming down here, to, they would get hit or um, end up in the bush on the side of the road. Um, the the road itself, where we have the gate, 100 metres up from the formed road that goes onto public land. So a lot of the formed road, or well, more of the formed road, is on private property than public, than the paper road. Um, where we installed the gate is at the end of council, where council maintain it, which is a roundabout. And if the gate wasn't there, obviously there's nowhere for anyone to turn around at the top. Um, there's a um, quite a quite a number of kiwis conservation area up there that's got kiwis which is um, being uh, maintained privately with rodent and pest control um, yeah so that, I mean our concerns a lot along that revolve around the conservation side of it and obviously the safety of public so, so like I said when, when I'm there I'm a full-time resident then the gate is open for daylight hours, and then I lock it at night. But they are here. We, we'd like we'd like to have um, you know um, consent to have the gate stay in place yep. and be locked at night, and maybe a sign put up just stating res uh, you know restricted to residents' vehicles. We have also left a. Um, uh, public, you know, like an access way for bikes and walkers. It's always open. Right. Yeah. So when the gate's locked, walkers can still go through and push bikes can still come out. Mm. Um, yeah, and, and other things, you know, they've had hunters go up there. Um, and basically, once you're off the forms, any side of the form road, you're on private property. Um, so there's another thing for the Kiwis, you know. Um, and obviously at night time, uh, you know, like we hear vehicles go up there if the gate's unlocked. We can't just lie in bed and not worry about it. And there's two other houses up the end of the road that are um, holiday homes. So obviously one's got to get out of bed and go see what's going on. 
Can I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. is, is the gate by your place, John? Um, it, it just where the rubbish truck is. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Just above that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Have you got set any pictures of it? Yes. Yeah. 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 So it. Yeah. Okay. So the only access is to Dells and um, myself and, and yeah, Joe. Yeah. 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 And Dell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And which absentee sort of people? Jill are. and um, Jill and uh, Dell are absentee. Yeah. Home, you know, holiday home. Yeah. 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 And Dell. I mean, Dell's one that's done a huge amount of um, conservation up there with yes. trapping and yeah. looking after the kiwis. He's also Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible that what they've been dumping up there. I mean, we could move the gate 100 metres up, but then, hey, there's nowhere for anyone to turn around, and it just creates a problem with, to us residents of people park their cars there and walk in, and it's a sensible place for it to be. Um, yeah, and I just, you know, I'd hate to see kids, like, especially around Christmas time and holiday time, there's a lot of kids riding their bikes up there walking. Uh, who, who lays responsible when one of them gets taken out? Yeah. And emergency services, I guess they'll... Well, at night, they'll just, it's like any gate, mate, you know, mm. hang the lock and go. Yep. You know? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Any other questions for Aaron? So, when you say ping the lock... Well, they the... cut the padlock. I mean, it's the same okay. as any um, Epsom house, the mm. holiday homes that have gates locked. Yeah. If something happened when they went there, yeah. they're just going to cut the lock. And well, I'm carry. just thinking of ambulance, say... Yeah. Just and, and of course they don't have the whatever it takes to, to okay, cut. So if an ambulance was called up there, the gate would be open, I would say, because there'd be people up there. Yeah. Um no unless good, it's yeah. a hunter or so someone's got to make a phone call down. I suppose they? so. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And John McGregor has a key as he? well. Oh, I know where you live, John. So, you know, John's there a lot of the time. We lock the gate um when we go away sometimes. So no one's up there, so no one needs to go up there. Yep. With, with vehicles. At all, yeah. Mm. And like I say, not about eighty percent of the road or seventy percent of the road, the form of the road, is on private property. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Okay. Any other speakers? Morning. Morning, Lynn. For anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Lynn Fenwick, and I'm a resident of Coromandel for the last 14 years, and I've been coming here for about 55. I was adding up, which is pretty horrific, isn't it? <laughs> um, and I work, my background is tourism, and I currently work for the Information Centre here. I'm not on behalf of them, but my interest in tourism is, is part of why I'm here. Um, I'm concerned, first of all, I think that the um, the layout of the town is absolutely stunning and it's beautiful and everything is looking really cool. But there are two car parks that I'm really concerned about and some signage around those. So I haven't got a presentation, but I do have some photographs on my iPad if anybody wants to have a look. Um, the first one is, if, as you're coming out of, um, oops, sorry. as you're coming out of Bullen Street, and you're turning to the right to head up past the council. The car park right on that corner, if there is a camper van and a um, park on that corner, the visibility is extremely restrictive. If you get a large vehicle on the other side, and we're now talking about high ace, I don't know what all the brands are, but high ace vans, vans, anything like that, um, on the, uh, the other side, but on the library side, then it is twice as bad. Um, and I think that, that I'd like to see that car park removed um, just on that one, or no camper van signs on it or something like that. But you get, you're now getting boats and, and cars in town, and it's really, really bad. I just think it's terrible. The other car park for me is basically across the road, outside the bazaar, there is a car park that's sort of on the curb there, mm -hmm. and people aren't, at, you know, when you're not able to park correctly, Close to the curve, sticking out. They're out. You get the, you know, the back of the cars pointing out, and I think that's also pretty bad. And you get a combination of all three of those at once, and it's really bad. I was parked. I came out the Willem Street car park last uh, week twice, and that's what reminded me to to come and do this. Um, the 
And the other thing, the third thing for me is that the, we have a, a low car park behind the shops, which I think should be utilised a lot more, particularly for camper vans. There is no signage for that car park. Well, there is if you like to go and look for it, but you'll see from my photographs, as you're coming down the road, you actually can't see that sign unless you are right level with it and you turn right and you have a look. Yes, there. exactly. I think mm. the post is loose and I think that um, people have gone down there or council staff have gone down there and, and moved around, but, but you can't see it. Just to clarify that, yeah, yeah where you're talking about now, is it behind the old smoking company? company? By the smoke house. Smoking By company. Smoke house. Yes, yeah. so just past the smoke house. And there's a, um, now there's a, a road sign there in front of that, um, which um, just, you can't even see it. So the, the sign's now swiveled, but even if it was pointed at it, you wouldn't be able to see it. It's mm. just hopeless. Sorry, can we re-clarify that, please, Lynn? So what's your issue down there? I just would like to see the car park behind the well, Woolham Sand Car Park utilised yeah. much more. Yeah. And if when you're coming into town, when you're driving into town, and you come up by the smokehouse there, or yeah. before there, if there was a large sign to say camper van parking, visitor yeah. parking, all day parking, yeah. free parking is always the We have there. been, yeah. Free parking yeah. 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 But you know, there's no sign there to tell you that there's even a car park yeah. now, or there is one, but you can't see it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the second point is probably the better one. There is yeah. one, but you can't see it. It's, it's on the. It's also too close to where you would be turning. Yes. So if you're going to yeah. turn, you'd need to have you know a few minutes or a few seconds to actually make your turn and put yes. your indicator on and do all those things that you're supposed to do. Yeah, and you need to be in that right hand lane anyway to make that turn, and then you're kind of almost like, oh gosh, I can't now because I'm in this lane. Yeah, and then yeah. you come into town, and I don't think there's a car park down here to really turn. Into yeah. Wallace Air and go around that back way. It's yeah. a great car park. It's fantastic. It is, yeah. Oh, thank you. And you know, with my tourism hat on and my visitor's hat on, I want to see people parking there. I want to see people stopping and shopping. Mm. You know, yep. It's as simple as that. Mm. But yeah. park safely yeah. and um, help yeah. us all out. So, yeah. do, you, do you push the, um, the Fury's Creek car park area at all through the. No. 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 There's a huge space down there. Yeah, there is. Yeah. No, but there's, so. there's no indication that there is even yeah. Yeah. parking down there because, um, you know, and they're not going to be going to the information centre to find out where they can park. So it's got to be, it's got to be sign indicated. But, you know, if you, if, you know, if you don't know the town and you come in and you mm. miss the first one, you come into town, you're going to turn right or left, you're not going to find Peary's Creek Park either. No. So I think oh, that no. we should be trying to, you know, we want people to stop here mm. and so stop and park, know mm. where you can park. Yep, no, good points, thank you. Yeah. 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 Right. And your, your timing is perfect because the roadie manager and his team are sitting out yes. there listening to <laughs> 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 They're listening. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. 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 All right. Any other questions for them? No. Okay. Thank, That's great. Thank, thank you very much, Lynn. Any other ones? Speakers in the crowd there? Oh, sorry, then both at the same time. Okay. Nobody asked for a proper forum? Okay, we'll um, move that. The speaker is um, Aaron Harris and Linda yep. Freeman. I'll move that. We have a second. Oh, yeah. Does the pay the piece there? All right. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, um, I'm not aware of any items not on the agenda. So we'll move on to item 1.5, ladies, um, conflict of interest. Um, I do have a conflict of interest on um, in regard to community management item coming up. I remember 200 funding, so I can declare that. Oh, do I as well? Yes, you do actually, I believe. Oh, okay. All right, I'll declare it as well. It, it's up to you though, it's your call yeah, whether well, you think you need to or not. It, it makes it awkward because we haven't got time here. You were doing more and more and more. I don't think there's an, I don't, I can't see a conflict in May um, in terms of that I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he wrote the report. Yeah. Morning. Okay. Um, next up, a minister for confirmation. He's been previously circulated. Yeah. 
Moving on to, are you happy in the chair or are you? No, no, you're <laughs> I like someone nice and close. Yeah, I do now. Yeah, yeah. You must have, I'll move both of you. Peter Sandwich with bubbles on one side, Donald on the other. Uh, you're supposed to say form between the long and the Right, go. Okay. So um, I will leave the room for the next one and hand the chair over to uh, Jan. Right. Okay, so we want to receive the report from the Coromandel 200 Loon Festival Working Group and consider a request for part reallocation of funding given. Yep. Oh, am I on the right one? 2.1? Yes, yep. 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 The Coromandel 200 group was formed in 2018 to look at how the community could celebrate, commemorate the 200th anniversary of the anchoring of the British naval ship HMS Coromandel in June 1820. As planning progressed, it was agreed that it would be sensible to combine this event with the biannual Illum Festival of Lights. A report on the spending of the community grants received by the group is Appendix 1. Should be noted that all grant funding was spent on the festival, although not necessarily on just the items identified in the application, and therefore the community board is asked to consider approving retrospectively the reallocation of the funding to the areas where it was most needed to ensure a well-run event. <clears throat> so the resolutions are, one, that um, firstly that the Coromandel Colville Community Board receives the Coromandel 200 funding report, uh, 22nd of October 2020, and two, approves the reallocation of unspent funding given to the Coromandel 200 Loom Festival through 2021 community grants round to be used to meet the outstanding costs of entertainment and extra lighting for the festival. So I'd like to move that that um, report, um, or, well, I guess the, 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 yeah, the, the resolutions are accepted. All those uh, seconder? Yep. All those in favour? Thank you. You can, you can come back in, um, Mr. Pritchard. And thank you very much for writing that report. And um, thank you, and thank you to the community board for your support. I think I need a chair no, next to um, oh, yeah. oh, Thank you. Okay, so our next item is uh, item 3.1, license, lease and occupy. Um, so we have a cover report there. By Donna Holland. Morning. I wanted to speak to Morning, the report. Morning, Donna. Around this. Yeah. A bit later, I'm not. Yeah. So, so what I, um, I'll just give you a brief overview of this, um, this policy. We, oh, we've done, um, we've done a little bit of work with changing this and getting this policy sort of more fit for purpose um, through this LTP process. We've taken it to council for a, a workshop, so we've actually workshopped it through with them, um, I think it was the beginning of October. Uh, 6th of October, and um, there's not a there's not a lot of changes as such to the policy. It's more clarifying um, some of the some of the, the terms and the, te the words there, such as like community organisation. Um, actually, just sort of confirming what so. what that means um, and and it, but making it a lot easier for people to understand the policy mm -hmm. and to also um, for staff to administer it as well. Um, just one thing that I would like to bring to your attention with us is we've also at the same time reviewed the um, rates remission policies um, and there's a policy in there in relation to um, community groups yes. and we've, well, I've, I've mentioned it a little bit in the report here. Um, so we've, we've made a couple of changes there which kind of is in line with this with the policy with the um, leases and licensing policy as well. 
And that is that we've just tidied this up because, I mean, previously the board has um, approved through the LTP process, approved um, remissions for community groups, but we never had actually had a policy and there, was, there wasn't any, um, you know, to go by to, for that to have actually been done. So we've just tidied that up. So um, it gives the board um, the delegation to approve um, rates remissions to community groups who are suffering you know, some sort of financial hardship and can't afford to pay the, the rates if they are using um, council property. So it just tidies that up a bit. So rather than it coming to you through the LTP process, um, each, and each, each group will need to apply um, for, for a remission and then once we get that application through, then we will bring it back to you for a decision on um, whether you want to grant that remission or not. So that's that's the one change that we've got there. And it's, it's basically just to tidy it up so we can make sure that it's fair for everybody and also that it makes it easier for people applying and also for staff to administer. That's it. They're the main changes. If anybody's got any questions, we do through the chair. Um, um, on the, um, the attachment A in the background, you've got um, on the first thing, oh, where is it? You've got the news from the five minutes. I've got first paragraph on, in the background. Is that attachment A? Have I got attachment A? Doesn't seem to read the same as what I read in my notes. Hmm. It's attachment B. No, it's definitely not. Uh, attachment B is the actual policy. There's a background that's in the actual report, wasn't that background section, was it? Yes. In the actual report, there's a background section. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, Sorry. Um, anyway, well, I can't find it on, on my paper here. What was it saying? Okay, so in the first paragraph, it says um, something about that um, that use council property, like anybody that uses council property, and I'm. Um, Wondering if that should be that um, that rent council property, or rent or lease council property, rather than use. Okay. Um, um, I wish I could find it. Yeah. It's in the. It's in the. Yeah. Sorry. It's on the report under the summary background. It's in there. Um, Why haven't have I not it's got the that? line where it says community groups that use council property? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, sure. Have I not got that page? What page? Page 15, it'll be okay. you, Jen. On the summary. Okay. Yeah. It is too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's about when the policy was this is the, ordered to effect and why it was put into effect. That's right. This is oh, the yeah. background on the the old policy when they first put in. But yeah, we're happy to change. I'm happy to change. I just think it's it could be um, like groups that use, like um, <laughs> Is, is the wrong way because like groups do use it might they might have a picnic or something like that or whatever it's yeah. about about you know identifying who it is yeah yeah totally agree yeah. we can easily get that change thank you for pointing that out i thought that was more about why the policy was brought in to give artists people that were using the property mm. that's the way i read it right mm. that's in back in 2006 this is uh, that's why they brought in the, mm. the, the policy. And now this is an update to the policy just to give it a, a bit more teeth. That's right. Does, does it actually affect any, any parties that are currently? Well, I've, no, I've made so. a note here that um, groups that own the buildings. Oh, oh, no, that's a different question. Sorry. Sorry. That's a, okay. it's, it's a separate question. That's sorry, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, do you have any groups currently that have a license to occupy or, we or have a lots. lease? That, yeah. um, I realise you do, but yeah. other, yeah, do you have any groups that are affected by this change? No, not yet, because with the people that, I mean, this, isn't, this is only going to affect probably new leases going forward. The leases yep. that are currently in place are already, um, you know, we're already bound by those lease agreements and those lease documents. So this is for when, it, when there's a renewal um, of a lease or, you know, a, yeah. another, another group leasing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I have another question. So groups that own the buildings that are on council lakes, like in, in Coromandel Town here, we've got the pension of flats that are on leased property and the um, Samuel James Reserve. Um, um, I'm just wondering, um, and they have subleases on them? So what? who's the responsible, who under this, under your new, and is is the responsible? It is the is it the person who leases off you? It would be the leasee. Yeah. Whoever leases off us. Yeah. yeah I'm not okay. sure whether that particular um, where the pension housing is covered by this policy or not. I would have to. Yeah. Check that could be covered by something else. So right. Okay. One. Yeah. And I just have one other silly little pedantic thing. No You've used the word um, derogates um, in, uh, under the disclaimer. And so I looked up the word derogates because I didn't even know what that meant. It's probably not supposed to be. And, and um, what it means is to do, put down derogatory kind of thing. But it's, so if that's the case, then it's out of context in this. Sorry, whereabouts? In the disclaimer. Um, what page, Jen? Um, well, see, I had it on my um, oh. on here, so I don't know what page. But is, this, it, oh, is but it within the policy itself or within the report? It's in the policy. Here it is. Yeah. Page 20. Policy statement, disclaimer at the bottom. Yes. 20, 20, page 23. <laughs> Nothing in this policy can derogates from the obligations the council may have with regard to I understand what it means and what you're trying to say, but it just doesn't when I looked up the I'll, I'll speak to our policy to many people because it's just they a word, I know, but that they put that in so yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Know the I mean I probably I sorry. guess it means that it doesn't negate um um you know council's yeah. responsibility. Yeah. But negate might be a better word to use rather than Does Council have a plain English policy? <laughs> <laughs> It is just, I know it's a pedantic <laughs> little thing, but it's just that if it's going into policy, then it's just like it needs to be understandable okay. and good meaning, I suppose. But, but otherwise, it's fantastic, yeah. Donna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well done for your diligence. <laughs> yes, oh, well, I always read really things really hard. I'm still reading the order. Oh, oh, well, I always Jen. do. But, um, <laughs> but it's just that when I find something that. I always look things up in the dictionary and, and yeah. um, it didn't seem to, but anyway, so, yep. A word like overrides might be better. Sorry. Yep, yeah. overrides. A word like overrides. Yeah. I'll, I'll, talk, be, I'll talk to policy yeah. and planning because that was, that's the part they did in the plan. Yeah, okay. Are there any other questions for Don? If there's none, then um, I'll... Need the resolution uh, that the Coromandel Coral Community Board receives the leases and licenses to occupy forest review to report dated 13th of October 2020 and to endorse the draft revised leases and license to occupy policy. Yep, I'll second that. Okay, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Yes, okay. thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Moving on to item 4.1, Pence Encroachment, Woods Road, Waikiki Bay. Morning. Morning. Good morning. morning, how are you? Good, thanks. Can we just check, has all the board met George before? Oh, no. no, last week, okay. no, last okay. minute. I oh yes, yes, yes. yes. So this is George yes. Matthews. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yes, engineer. we did. Yeah, yeah. we did. New Sam Eglin, just so you know what the position yeah. is. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, um, oh, you've not met Ed Barley on the left as the new roading manager, okay. and on the right is James McHardy and he's the Sam Eglin roading manager. And on the right is James McHardy and he's the same position as George, but services the southern that's district right, yeah. out of the district. Yeah. That's that's right. Right. Taking Matt's role. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Taking Matt's yeah. role. Yeah. 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 All right. And the board's all got a copy of the map that was related yeah. to. Yeah. So, is there any overview that you'd like to? Uh, yes. So, uh, we are happy to uh, give the, the council and the community board to recommend that we can put the gate in. Yep. They can put, but they can't lock it because it's against law. So. That's a recommendation. Okay. Yeah. 
well, having heard the public forum this morning, they, they did allude to the fact that they would be locking it at night. Or, or they are locking it at night. They are, yeah. Um, and, yeah. 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 Because we got a national policy saying uh, no public roads allowed to be locked. It's so that, that's a national, that's a law? Yes, that's a law. Yeah. 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 So it's on one of our unmaintained roads, isn't, isn't it, that get like it is? Everything. If it's yeah. a paper road, it's mm. the same, same yeah. policy. Mm. So based on the Local Government Act 1974, and there's a national policy from the Working Access Committee. So both saying no paper road or anything is allowed to lock mm. at any time. Yeah. How does Long make it away with it then? Don't know. Mm. It's been doing it for years. Every mm. morning again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They look at 10 o'clock at night. That's, that's on a reserve. That's, a that's reserve land. That's a different law. He's talking different. about roads on public oh, yeah. roads. Yeah. You're talking about no. the Tux Bay Road? No, yeah. well, the, road the camping ground road. road. Right at the camp. Yeah, that's where it becomes reserve. The legal reserve. road ends up at the corner. So all of that road going down to the campground is actually reserve land. Mm. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good point. Oh. Mm. Just trying to think of any other instances, and and yeah, okay. So um, should it be should should council discover it's locked? I guess I just give uh, if it's locked, then uh, we will send our contractors to remove the gate because yep. we will give already give a written warning to them by an email. Right. If it's still happening, then we have to take it down. Yeah. Yep. So it's up to them to yes. Mm -hmm. And in order to uh, give the permission to put the gate, we need to get a letter from one of the residents because we need to take someone to take the ownership of the gate. Because if we want to remove it, we will need to contact him that we are removing it. And so that's yeah. something uh, we will contact the residents and asking for them to write a request. So the community board can um, recommend to the council to retrospectively approve the gate. Well, approve the gate with conditions, of course. Yes. Then, yeah. 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 Mm. A legal gate. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions for John? Um, so he said that there's access either side, but that's actually a really narrow road. That, but it's, it's a track. It's not a road. It's a track that goes up there, and there is residents who do live up there. Um, yeah, I mean, it would affect somebody like Dell. Would, and um, it's good that they people can sort of walk past it. Yeah, you know, I guess mountain bike and that kind of thing. Um, past it, so the road's already there. This is just mm. um, a really just ticking the box to, to say that we know that the gate's there and that we mm. are, we're okay with that. And if they decide to to lock it, and then that's on them, and then I run the risk of losing mm. the gate. Mm. Simple as that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Really, you have no mm. option. I mean, yep. this is law. You can't change yep. the law. And the gate's yeah. already rare, so it's just a matter of community board recognising that there is a gate there, and um, legalising it, I suppose. And making them aware that that's why we've done it that way. Yes, yes. Is, is Aaron the, the spokesman from in regard to the gate? Pretty much, Aaron yeah. or John McGregor. Yeah. 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 But Aaron doesn't live up there. I think maybe John just got nervous to speak, yeah. so Aaron did speak. Yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah. Because it's John that's been coming in. Yeah. Yes, yeah. OK. Is it John that you've been meeting with oh, up there? John and Aaron. And Aaron, yeah. Yeah. OK. Mm. If John lives there, then he would be probably the... Well, John lives right near where the gate is. Yes, he does. Yeah. Has mm. Aaron got his bees up there? He must have. That's probably why he's worried at night. Yeah. yeah. But if, if he's got bees on his own land, but he hasn't got a land there. I don't think Aaron's a landowner up there. Well, there's the beehives on the side of the road all over the place, eh? Yeah. Yeah. On, yeah. on part of my report today, but anyway, we'll talk about that later. Well, I want to talk about while the roading people are here. Yeah. But, yeah. Any further discussion on what you can pay this road? No, if not, then the resolution reads that the Coromandel Crawford Community Board received the fence encroachment woods road to Bay Bay Congress report dated 15th of October 20, 
<coughs> you recommend to council that the staff advice and have a win. We have a move for that. Yep, I'll move that. We have a second. Yep. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Yes, very, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're not disappearing, you're ready, writing team man. If you want us to stay or stay. I can I put a close as yes, we'd yeah, like yeah. you to stay might, because might be the board time. would like you to hear something. Okay. Obviously, okay. <laughs> So, um, would you like to do that now, James? If I, okay, yep. if, I, if I can. Yep. Yep, we can see um, we're going to the Well, it is about beehives on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a real um, conglomeration of beehives on the side of the road at Imodio Bay, which is where people park and go fishing and what have you. I mean, I know camper vans often park up there too, but, um, but I'm just wondering if there's any um, Road any sort of anything that we can do because actually none of none of us residents are happy about it and nor are even the local beekeepers. It's a mountain town. Um, it's just on. I live at one four three six Colville Road, so it's before there. It's the first sort of like little fishing spot before there. It's at the end of our property, so it's probably around about one three something. Road. There's no houses. Whose land is that? It's on the left hand side if you're heading north. Yeah. It's not, it's road on road reserve. Oh, it's on road reserve. Yeah. yeah. So. You have to do that. No, they're not. But they do, though. Bees from May. Bees are a little bit strange because, if I remember rightly, they're actually classified as livestock. Um, so. There's some rules I have to reread about um, their positioning and their movement, but technically you cannot put anything on the road reserve without the consent of the road control authority yeah. council. So any beehives within the road reserves without consent are illegally placed. What we can do is we can find out the owner, ask them to leave them. It might be the tap who's here this morning. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's an out of town person who owns. So I, I do I can uh, find out. I know. I know how to find out the name. Okay. Yeah. 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 So he's got a, a um, on on some private property across the road. He's got about 120 highs, which none. Of, we're not happy about that. But that's on private property. We can't do anything about yeah. it. But we want we want to know if we could do something about on road reserves they can be moved on. Yes. Good, that's good. Yeah. Okay, thank I you. I think there's even rules on private property as to where they can be, how close to the fence line and things like that. Wow. I remember they read from the by yeah. down the council last year. Yeah. In town, yes, yeah. but when you're on like this is coastal rural, yeah. it's on, you know, property, um on a large property. But yeah, and I mean we're not happy about it because our local bee people also, um, you know, stick to the rules, and um, and and um, of course they take. There's there's no trees, there's no manuka trees around there, but they're coming onto like, our property, okay. and um, you know from where they are to um, steal the honey off our bushes, which we, and we've got hives on our place as well. It's not personal because the hives don't belong to us anyway, but uh, but it's just. Yep. There's been complaint from people because that's where people are fishing. Okay. Cool. And they've cleared the area to put them there, didn't they? Pardon? They've cleared the area to put them Oh, they have. Yes, yes, so they, they did. Should. In fact, they've there's a little the fire hmm. where, um, you know, where, where they have done so. I don't know. <laughs> we thought so. Mm. Are there yeah. any other roading related questions while the team are here? Otherwise, we'll let them go. Um, yes, please. Yes. Um, I love the work that you've done around Takuma Road with the re-establishing the road. Major works. And that was, I've showed photos for the rest of the board because they don't. I ride around there during the week. Um, yeah, but is that finished? Not yet. Is it going to be done before Christmas? The, if I remember right, the site has got a archaeological and locally re-interests, which we're trying to resolve. Okay. 
can't guarantee that that will be done before Christmas, but we are progressing with it, shall I say. Okay. All right. And the other piece of roading that I was interested in is the piece that you've done down the coast, which has been marvellous. It's going to be bit. the roading. Yep. Is there going to be um, fencing put up there before Christmas along the edge of the road? Where else is that, down the coast. Where, the highway. Yeah. Do you? Well, I mean, I know it's not you guys, but you can find out. Is there going to be barriers put up? Because that's a real steep drop off there where they fixed the road. And if it's not got it's some sort of barriers, and then they widen it and put all that rock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean they've done a great job, but I'm really well, yeah. I'll answer that question yet. I'm, I'm sure you would be able to, and give them a little, because <laughs> 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 I can see it being a little bit hazardous over yeah. summer, you know. Yeah, another million dollars. Well, you've probably got more clout than we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but now you're doing a really good job, and I've had lots of good comments about all the work you've done up at Colville too, around mm. Wolf Road there. Mm. Yeah, a lot of the locals there are very impressed. So, mm. yeah. yeah, it's a lot of work. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a huge amount of work. I don't think people realise how much actually goes into it, you know. No, especially when it's off the side of the road. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you're busy concentrating on the carriageway, not looking down the side for all the work that's mm. been done. Yeah. I like the speed bump and the eye rope, other than I there. Mm. That's, good. that's good. It's good, eh? Mm. Nice good road, good. nice yeah. speed bump. Yep. That wasn't us. <laughs> that wasn't us? <laughs> well, that's not a council road. Is it not? <laughs> I thought it was a district road. No, no. Road. Yeah. It's a Manaya road, but it's not a council main. They got funding yeah. to get it done. Manaya themselves did that. Well, well done. Yeah. 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 Looking the right route. I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's why I thought I'd clarify. Yeah. 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 Glad to work well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've even got a jail bar. Is that your driveway then? Thanks. It is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll get back to our uh, work program. Um, Right. Yeah, I think they want you to just stay with us. Just in case stuff comes up in that, that oh, you can't okay. you can answer. True, true. That you and I can't answer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I quite often. Quite often the case. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll just go through a week. <laughs> so I don't know whether you want to speak to Bruce or we'll just go through them. Um, yeah, I'm happy to take questions. Um, again, we've. Um, we're kind of re um, revising and tweaking this report, just trying to get a little bit better. Um, I probably said that last time, it wasn't at the last meeting actually. So, just added a few columns about who's responsible for the projects and for the work, um, added another couple of columns around financials and expected completion dates. Uh, so, it's a bit of a work in progress to refine it and get it, get it really good and make sure we've got a uh, former team answering with the right information to try and preempt uh, the questions that, that the board members will have. And then we've obviously got the other stuff at the bottom that um, that Alan and Bubbles have had um, for a long time around these other issues. So not projects as such, but other information and updates. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's four items on the bottom there that you'll see. So happy to take any questions. Just the, um, through the chair, um, the the dry vault um, public conveniences, and I know it's off the track, but it's and it's, it keeps mentioning Ototi, but we've long since decided that Ototi is not going to be involved in it anyway. I mean, we need to take it off there completely, and maybe put in what we've got, but we've got that in the long term plan. The um, is a, probably more up to date than Bruce on that. Yes. Um, the is there a, that's going to be on the workshop agenda. For the first of December ah, okay. to consider where we want to make the priorities. Right. So Ross is actually putting a, a briefing paper together for the workshop on that. Okay. Yeah, and, oh, it, it, thank it, you. Yeah, okay. We realise I totally won't be part of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Um, I didn't have anything else, I don't think. I'm going to see the D6, Mr. Lord. Due to be finished eighteenth of December, so I guess that'll be just about coming up as well. Was there um, any um, anything to further on from the behind the star and garter? That's the only thing with these, these guys involved with that. Um, in terms of the bylaw review, yeah, and 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 moving that that car park in area. 
directly behind the Starring data. Yes. That we, George might be able to give you an update if that work's been done yet or not. Yeah, so it's given to the policy team to put it onto the file. Once it's in the file, it's going to be the sort of practice into the market. Uh, okay, so yep. Generally, try and get the bylaw changed before we do the market. Otherwise, <laughs> yep. It has to be the other way around. Especially given the people involved, probably yeah. a good idea. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, our, and our bylaws team go out there and confront and, and someone that hasn't quite made it through the bylaw process. So yep. we've got to refund that or you know. Okay. So we're we'll trying to mm. get things loaded in the right order. Is it on the next council meeting agenda? Do we know? Sorry, it's been. Sorry, I it is. Um, I questioned the gang um, in the office the other day about the, <laughs> the team, the team <laughs> about the um, broding that goes, I know you have to help me with that bubbles, around from the four square to the hotel, around oh, the back. To the Admiral's Arms. Yeah. So oh, they're doing yes. work there. Yeah. Um, and the hideous mess that's on the side of the road there of a car and rubbish and overgrown stuff and can we get rid of it and um, Bubbles and the team thought that it was private property and so we wouldn't be able to get rid of it. Is there some way that we can get rid of it? Because it looks just, it looks terrible. And yeah, I'd it's on private property, I'm afraid. We've got enough hours. Okay. It's in the road reserve, then yes. So has it been officially checked that it's not on road? Do we know? I know that there is a privately owned strip that goes down there. Yes. Havoc Villains own a, a, yeah. a strip. So that's. Uh, it's only about a metre wide or something, but it's almost the length of that. Because, like, that, that truck that's there is right on the edge of the gravel. Mm. All as there is is a little bit of tape saying that you shouldn't be there, but that's all. And so it might be actually on roading. Is, is, that, is that, it's down Potter Lane. Down Potter Lane yeah. West. Yeah. I think if you, yeah, it's a bit hard the to see because it's the trees, part of Pottery Lane. trees hiding okay. it on that aerial view. Okay, is it around the end? Like, no, it's right at the, it's sort of about halfway between the corner and the hotel. It's just, um, there's my glasses. Just in there. Okay, so you can't see because the trees. Yeah, the trees are overhanging it. Okay. But it just looks like a dog's breakfast. They'd be really it's nice to get rid of it. Strip. It won't be Macmillan's strip because looks they wouldn't. Looks like private, but we'll, we'll check that. We'll yeah. Try and see I haven't had a lot to do with it, but I know Liz I looked into it, and yeah. so it's Liz that's saying that it's on private property. No, that's right. I'm, I'm, I think it'd be on private property side yeah. because Macmillan's wouldn't allow that. Okay, we'll have another one. Okay, please. If it is sort of on road, then we might be able to have some leeway to get rid of it. Mm. That would be really nice. Because yeah. it just makes the place look horrible. It does. Oh, it's terrible down there. It looks shocking. If, if the valuation's been done for Hauke House, how land purchase? Um, as at the yeah. time of the report writing, they were waiting for it to come back from the valuer. I don't think it has, because John yeah. would have let me know by now, because he knows the board's very keen to have it done. Yeah. So yeah. But I will just check with him again this week. That's why these are on our reports, so we can mm. keep needling. Yeah. yeah. And thank you very much for the count, uh, presumers council that filled in that, that dip in there. That's by the oh, youth yeah. rooms, yeah, yeah, because it's pretty bad. Yep. We should send a bill to the um, MOE, uh, um, yeah, Ministry of Education, for that, for doing that. Oh, we don't. Okay, okay. Jay. We don't. <laughs> we don't. We don't. All right, yeah. No, we won't send a bill. Just so we finish the negotiations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sorry. Yeah. 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 I just have to say, I see the bike parks on here, and, and mm. what a great job they're doing. Isn't isn't it? It? Amazing. That is absolutely amazing. That's going to be a real asset. Outstanding. Yeah. 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 It'd be great when it's formally mm. um, leased and up and running. Um, and the shoreline management plan in December, yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to 
other thing just to draw your attention to is Jack's point of boat ramp and um, this comment's actually a bit um, out of date from the last um, last report, I believe. Um, so we're actually moving forward to doing the repairs on looking down at the water down the ramp on mm. the right hand side, retaining wall, which is kind of slowly kind of failing. Yeah, it is. yeah so um, we're actually going to get in there and um, and pull it out and we've got new piles and just yeah. rebuild that as a stage. So okay. we'll have that actually done kind of by mid December. Um, good. So yeah, just oh, that's good. Just so you guys are aware, and obviously, as you know, there's always. Mm. Um, Public interest and what goes on down at Jack's point. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, I want you guys to not know what's going on. So. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's already, that, that, that budget is already approved in the place. It is, yeah, yeah. Place, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, the only thing is that um, the thing which could delay us, and hopefully it doesn't, is the H6 holes that we need for that. So, you need the H6 and those top holes, and they don't run those very often. So, we're trying to get those um, at the moment, but that again it takes a little bit of a time, to, a bit of a delay on getting them, a bit of a lead time. So we're doing our best to try and get those as fast as possible so it doesn't hold us up. Mm. But I'll let you know if there's a big hold up and we're not going to have that in December. So. Yeah. Do you get them through Max Bird? Uh, I don't know. I think there's a couple of places they get them through. Mm. Um, so they, they, they've been working hard last week um, to try and find who might have them around already without having to kind of get them on like a run, but um, yeah, they're struggling. So yeah, not sure. <laughs> I recall um, that uh, Councillor Morrissey was keen to see the Victoria Street bypass settled into our works program, but I see it's not there. Right, we'll put that in next time. And I think the um, uh, Sugarloaf project should probably be in here too, because that's still uh, a local activity in the marine. In this section. Yes, yes, yeah. Because yes, yeah. those are two quite big um, key items for our community board. Yeah. It'd be good to have them there and we can. And just so I think you are all aware yeah. that there'll be community uh, public information days held in this meeting room yeah. next Monday We've and Tuesday the, yeah. evening. Yeah. 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 Um, just on the at, at um, Parikirikiri, um, you know, Jack's point, um, there's a, always been a pile of I don't know what it is. Just, um, Roading it yeah. yeah. It's the car park area. Yeah, it's been there for a long time. I mean, it just that yeah. whole area is so untidy. And yeah, the challenge is they want to store chip close to, you know, close to town where they're, where they're doing stuff. But mm. oh, we can follow up and just see if we can. Should, they've been it's spread it out. It's over. been, yeah, yeah exactly. Been it's been there for no, so no, long. Last time it created a bigger nuisance because it was too thick and the cars would get stuck in it. Oh, yeah. But it's been there for <laughs> such a long time. I don't know which roadworks it's close to. Mm. It's been, it's in case of quite Is it? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, well, no. Norm normally, it, it's it's at its worst in the resealing season. So yeah. it's when they're doing the yeah. contractors are doing the reseals on the state highways and the local roads. So it's mm -hmm. normally when there's the most there. But I think some just gets finished for a while. I yeah. think yeah, yeah. If, if they're finished, they just leave it there and yeah, yeah. yeah. finish from next time. Yeah, they kind of yeah. don't like to leave it there until the next year. You know, yeah. mm. so it'll, it'll be gone. By the but meanwhile, the locals have been in yeah. their utes and trailers. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. good on. They help not get away. Okay, well, I don't believe we'll have a look at you. If there's nothing else about the work program, um, just before we, we do the resolution, I, um, normally the process would be if we have a presenter in public forum, then it, it, it would possibly go to a report and then it would possibly go to the next community board meeting, which is not till February. And what I'm referring to now is the, um, the signage uh, as to where people can actually park as they approach town right from Thames. So seeing as all the decision makers are here and then and summer's coming, I'm just wondering whether it would be possible to have a dedicated like um, sign that showed where the parking was. So when you drove into town, you have a big P if you go left and a big P if you go right and a big P if, uh, yeah. if you, before you get to the roundabout. I don't know, P's a bad item, but you know, these P's are good P's. 
<laughs> or just don't <laughs> be with me. <laughs> but, but, you know, I'm just, just in my mind's eye, I'm just seeing a map, uh, you know, with basically very basic roading and, and areas where people can park. So it's quite clear as you're approaching. So on a big sign yeah. like that shows the yeah. yeah. and then maybe. Yeah. 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 Where the parking is, is and, and where Down Street is, and where this one across the road town. is, and even behind the top it's supermarket, coming. there's actually, um, uh, it's not designated parking as such, but there is space there that. It could be utilised right through the summer. Um, okay, okay, we'll have a look at that and see what we can do. It's yeah. always a challenge because, you know, as you know, even though it's a 50k zone, you want to make sure you're not overloading people with information that, you know, they're driving in and they're so busy looking at it and they're crashing. So yeah. it's that kind of balance of, like, you, can, you know, we have to do it really simply to show, you know what I mean, that it's oh, yeah. a couple of weeks. Piece, and then when you get around the corner, then hopefully you see the one that actually points you to it. Well, so. I, I think that in other towns, in other small towns that you go to, there's a town, it, there's signs out as you're coming into town yeah. that gives that has it's quite and it's a big sign like our 50k signs as you come in, yeah. and and it's got arrows like that, you know, going like yes. which yeah. says parking and and you know etc. Yep. Or town and town centre, you know etc. Going straight ahead. Yeah. And on that would be, I would think, like Lynn said, you know, that the especially the camper vans, mm. so that they don't park in town, mm. is parking and a camper van sign, and it goes um, there. Yeah, I know that's something you guys have been pretty keen on for a long time. Long to actually try and siphon off those yeah. camper vans. Yeah. Because mm. yeah. yeah. parking in town, no matter where they park, it's an issue where you're coming out of little side streets of the visibility. Yeah. And it does those there. Those. That, 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 there is a sign showing uh, the Willems Ave car park, but it's too close to the actual road that yeah. you have to turn off there. And that's what Lynn's saying. It's a small mm. square like this, I think, mm. and it's on the yeah. bottom of that sign. It's like mm. 3P. Yeah. Um, and I think there's another difficulty in that when you do go up that service lane, the service lane, you've got to go right around it and then come back in the car park from the school side. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. You go straight ahead. You've got to park anywhere, you almost do, because they're all angled car parks, and you, it's at, I usually have to go right around and come back and then sit the nose up, because no. they're all angled the opposite direction. But you can't actually turn. Actually, you're right. Oh, I see what you mean about that, but that's because we changed. Yeah. Remember, we changed that to yeah. a two way access, whereas it yes. only used to ever be one way. Yes, but we might have changed but the access, not changed Same. the car parts. Half a dozen turns like that. You end up there. You try to do that on the camper van. Well, yes, but the camper van yeah, is up the, the other end. Long. You can drive straight into, yeah. and then and, and you can turn into them as well, because that's where we want them up that end, up yeah. this, up this, up the northern end of that car park. Mm. Once they're in there, we don't care. They can, yeah, yeah. muck around all they yeah. like. We just yeah. want them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so those, the, those. We might have to think about an earlier sign. Uh, that's that's, what, I mean. yeah. that, that's, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Yeah, that that it does. Sort the boss of say is that. Nodding, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. That would be you, Ed. And then, of course, there's the sign as you come into town at the roundabout. We've had the discussion before, I know. Um, about, yeah. Okay, yeah, because I brought your name up last time um, when I was talking about it, but you weren't here. Yeah, yeah. We talked about, because um, at a roundabout, um, there should only be, there should not be a whole conglomeration of signs. There should be just. That's Karpunga Road, that's Wharf Road, yeah. just the two roads at there, because otherwise you're getting people coming up, oh, yes. Yes. and there's motels and there's, you know, there's this, that yeah, there's the right. information centre. Yeah. So it's about getting that sign in. Um, and what we would like is a wooden mm -hmm. pole. It can be a steel pole, but look like the wooden sort of poles yeah. of the older style. To yeah. fit in with our. So, which sign do you say, why do we need to get that sign in? Which sign do we need to get in? That one. The one as you're coming down, you're coming down into the T junction, yeah. and then there's the roundabout, yes. and right opposite, yes. between the Star and Garter and yeah. Umu, there's a sign that's on a lean like that. Right. With lots of lots of so you want that out, whatever you Yes, yeah, yeah. and and a new one going in. Yeah, that just has the two. That right just right. has the two, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. And that it's um, it's not just a, a round steel pole that yeah, it's a heritage looking thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll have a look, we'll have a look into that because I don't know the history of that um, 
Well, there used to be a fantastic one there, which everybody looked at and, and tourists took photos of. It was always really dangerous, but but now that we've got the roundabout, it's yeah. even more. It is really dangerous. So we're going to get dangerous. lots of unhappy people if we just put them there and take it out. No, no, you're going to get lots of happy people because you're going to have a sign further down the road now saying where. You know, people yeah, can. Down which road? Oh, oh down Tiki Road. Okay. Yeah, 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 the big sign that we're just talking about now. So that's, that's going to be. Gonna, that's not going to have motels. No. And all that no, 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 so no, no, no. It's not. Other people that run motels and all that stuff who've got their signs up. Are they suddenly going to be very upset? When we well, possibly, but there's the people who who don't have the moteliers that don't have their mm. signs. There. No, but I understand what you're saying. All I'm mm. thinking about is I'm just thinking ahead to the repercussions or the public. Feeling. Send them to me, Bruce. Okay. Send them to me. I'll deal with them. <laughs> <laughs> Jen. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look into it. We'll look because I don't know how it was put there. Is there someone there at the moment, though? Is there a sign there at the moment? Yeah, on, yeah. on there. Yes, there is. There it's there. on a lane, yeah. and it's and it's and so it's got a lot lane. of signs. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. to provide some balance, um, Bruce, there is also um, uh, members of the public who feel that that's historic. Yeah. It's quaint, it's part of... And it was, yeah, part of us. Yeah, it was, yeah, it used to be. Yeah. 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 Take photographs no, no. Yeah. no, no. <laughs> that was kind of my point. <laughs> that was when it was a wooden one, yeah. and it had wooden signs on it, yeah. that it was a story. And we've got photos yeah. of those, they're in our streetscape. Yeah. Yeah. But now... Okay, we'll look into it. And yeah. yeah. We'll leave it with writing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And, and, it is, and it is law, because I've looked it up, What's about that? about um, road signage on a roundabout, right? Okay. And not having um, in many signs because it's too dangerous with people looking. Yeah. Looking up and oh, oh, I go right here, Drifting straight into the Star and Garda. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. Okay. And just before you leave, I don't know if you were aware of the Peter before about the new. It's not car park land, but it will be roading land um, behind the old supermarket down here. It is under roading because it's it's land that we took for the um, proposed service lane. Yes. Um, we've had a few complaints because the grass is really long and we're worried about fire hazard. Ed and I was wondering if we could just get it mowed and cleaned up for the summer. It has been mowed once before, but that was like a year ago or something. Mm -hmm. yep. So the contractors are all the last time, so they will come and mow it. Cool. Okay, great. Be good to get it done before. Christmas. Mm -hmm. If you want to meddle, let this come down a few years. <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone by now. Yeah. <laughs> Locals have taken by the trailer last week. <clears throat> okay, nothing else for the week program? Everybody happy? So the resolution is that the Coromandel Cobble Community Board confirms the minutes. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, confirms the minutes of the Coromandel Cobble Community Board. Yeah, it's not like that. Yep, I'll move that. We've seen work programs and other information. Some pages yep. do it. No. Okay, thank you. That the Coromandel Coggle Community Board receives the Coromandel Coggle Web Program and other information updates report dated 5 of October 20. Move that. Do we have a yep. second there? Yep. Yep. I've got some paper. Right. Right. Okay, getting some married things. Yay. So, um, we'll go on to the members' reports. Anything from anyone? Um, yep. <laughs> Okay. Um, went along with Jen um, on the coastal panel um, site visit bus trip. Oh yeah, how was that? Um, good, it was good. Um, huge bus, way too big, like we could have had one half the size and covered more ground I think to be fair because uh, it was that big that we didn't do the K Bay side because oh. I assumed it was too big, right. um, which was a bit of a shame but yeah. Um, it was a good trip, but there was a few people on there that I thought had other agendas than what we were there for, which was pretty disappointing because it took focus off the actual reason that we were doing the trip. They were more interested in things like wetlands. 
things like that. So that got a little bit out of hand, to be fair. Um, <clears throat> but never mind. We'll hopefully chop that off in future mm. meetings. So, um, and just an update for everybody on the um, community board, we had our AGM for Haraki House <coughs> Gallery um, a couple of weeks ago as well, and um, nothing major to report there, only that we, um, just for an update, uh, we, have, we have two um, committees running it at the moment. So we have a trust and then we have a management committee. <coughs> um, a lot of the trustees are getting to the age where they don't want to be doing it anymore. So we're actually reforming it and going to make it into an incorporated society. So we'll just have one body running there. Yes, yeah, so we're in the process of doing that. It'll take a few months, but yeah, that's what we're up to there. Um, and the only other thing that's been brought to my attention is the um, sign <laughs> on the corner of Kapunga Road, oh no, it's not Kapunga Road, it's Tiki Road and Fongapoa Road, where we've put our nice new sign. Yes. <coughs> and we've got this little funny sign at the bottom underneath with Kapunga on it. Yeah. And it just doesn't look good. Okay. I don't know who did it. Who did it? I don't know. I, it I looks terrible. I, I saw that and I thought, well, we didn't. I don't know who's done it and put it there. It's underneath. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And it right just, it looks, mm. and I don't know why it's it looks out of context there. Well, I'd say because it's somebody's protesting against it being called for a man or town. Or it's in the same it's somebody saying, can we recognise that it actually already had a name? It could be. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying yeah. is that I don't know who put it there. And, and it's in the same colours. Mm. But it just looks horrible, and if it had been done properly and and like used the same posts and put right across mm. and and done heritage looking, it would look fine and it'd look great and, and be right. But it just, yeah, nah, it just looks horrible. I just don't know who did it, and perhaps we could change it. Okay, so two things. Um, well, we don't know who did it. No, but it's also not a council sign. Like even yeah. the town signs, not council signs. So who who's well, it's, um, it was, who would we well, say those signers? Well, we we always said that it was like it was. I mean, well, who who the last time that we did, the one that well, was written was done was by association. association. Yep. Yeah, but that was but many years ago. It was yeah. and then because they were having the Coromandel two hundred <coughs> this year, they thought well it was pretty shabby. Yep. So it was really mm, the Coromandel two hundred, I guess, who okay. paid for the new sign. But then if everything that Coromandel two hundred did be, um, reverts back to council anyway, doesn't it? Um, well, it's gifted to the town. Yeah. Mm, just like the business association, they gifted it to the town, but they sort of look at it. <laughs> but um, it's a slippery slope when you start doing that. Yeah. Because then, uh, then oh, you put that then you've got right to... across the peninsula, and there's all these artworks that suddenly council inherits and, and has to upkeep and mm. has enough different <coughs> rates and all that sort of thing. Um, what well, well, I think the first thing to do would be to try and find out who, who put it there, and then maybe we can work with them to yeah, get a bit more aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, it could be done well, quite Margaret, easily. She's got a black book that's this thick, and she knows everybody, and she'll have it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do um, not know anything about that side. No. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> we have been recorded. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You, so you, that's uh, that's all from me. No, I just I think it's it's I'm fine with yeah. the kapanga bit. Yeah. That it's not the issue. It's just the little. Bit. <coughs> you want it to be in keeping with the. It, it detracts the from the sign. Um, and it's the, another the, thing that the poor guys have to mow around. You know, it, mm -hmm. you've got four posts now instead of two. Mm -hmm. So it could have gone right across and just been. Well, there's no money for a new sign in front of the coromandel. Well, we can organise that. That's not the problem. It's only a cheap sign, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's find out who did it. We'll find out and track them down. Anything from you, Jean? Uh the skateboard park. Skateboard park. Yes. So we are looking at having a skateboard park. We just want to <coughs> or uh, um, we have got, got a delegation coming to your board workshop about it. Oh great. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you. We are attempting to attempting okay, to find some money. Okay. 
Mm, well, I've, I've done most of mine, which was great. But um, the, the one thing that I just remembered about was um, I'd put in an RFS on behalf of some um, disability people to have the um, zebra crossing um, where it starts from the footpath to be painted white because people with um, um, visual disability they can't see can't see the bobbly bits and um, and where the um, zebra crossing starts. So I guess that's your... It's got tactile pavers, does it? Like the, the bobbly bits? It's got, it's got the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think George is dealing with that. Are we not, yes. George? Yes. So, um, yes. so the existing colours are not complained with the um, So it's given to where the prospect of the study in and uh, I got the colour recommendation from Margaret, so it's given to them. So. Because oh, oh, ideally we wanted, yeah. um, okay. we did want um, a sort of terracotta colour. Which is what we asked for, yes. we asked for terracotta. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you're talking about a different thing now, aren't you? There's the tactile tiles. Which yes. is going to get recolored, but now you're talking about a white. No, 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 it was the same, same thing. thing. And at the time when I put it in, they said, oh, it, it has to be bright yellow. And I said, well, well, we didn't really want it to be bright yellow. Is there another color? Yeah. And then it said, well, it might be white, might be acceptable. I said, well, that's more acceptable than yellow. Um, to but the but, apparently but, is a but, colour but, that uh, can yeah. come in and be yeah. painted. And yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. right. That, I mean, that would Do be really good. Do you think we had that done before Christmas, George? Yeah. Okay, oh, that's that's yeah. really good. I'll be able to tell you in a minute. Before Christmas, too, that's what came up. And I think yeah. that's been done on the threshold crossing as well? Just only on the pedestrian. Yes, and the reason for that is, and I found out the reason for that is, is because if you start putting it on other other crossings, people think it's a pedestrian crossing, and it's not. Yeah. It's it's you can't just cross whenever you want to. You have to be aware of the traffic. Whereas this one, is, so that's why if they start putting it on all of yeah. them, then it will be yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Yep. Um, I've just had one communication from a member of the public about uh, the Sugarloaf proposal, and that's uh, been addressed already by the public um, meeting that's coming up. Um, so that's all from me, really. Uh, so the suggested resolution is this, that the Parramatta Public Community Board receives the members' reports. Yep. Happy to move that. Second. Second. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so 5.2, report to exclude the public. So uh, just we're about to move in the public excluded. Um, so thank you for your interest in our local body affairs. I'm just waiting for Jennifer.